everybody. Happy Indigenous Peoples Month. My name is Lorraine O'Donnell. I'm the Executive Director here at Constable Hall in beautiful Constableville, New York. Right now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Constable family's remarkable relationship with Indigenous people. So come on in for a little bit. Come on in. Now, the hall is actually closed right now. We opened back up at the end of May, so uh, you've got to, this is a special little treat. Now, we're going to start with this guy. The reason we are here, this is William Constable Sr. We call him William the Purchaser because he was one of the purchasers of McCombs Purchase, which is part of the land that Constable Hall is on. It was the largest land sale in New York State and the country at the time in around 1791. So we call him William the Purchaser. Now, his family was from England and Ireland, and they moved over in, I think, the mid-1700s to New York City. They were mainly in import and export business and fur trade. Now, in the import-export business, here's a little trivia for you. They were actually one, the first family to bring trade over from China to the New World. And also, being in the fur trade, that is how the Constable family started their remarkable relationship with indigenous people. I mean, I want you to think about what the relationship might have been like during the 17 and 1800s between white people and native people. It was not good, but that's where the constables were different. We think they had a great relationship because of, of course, they had to deal with them with fur trading, but because the constables were in import-export, meaning the family was used to dealing with so many different cultures, so many different languages all over the world for their import-export business. So they had a different frame of mind about people who were different from them. So we think that they really thought more globally, which was very unusual back then. And I have to tell you as a director, uh, this part of the history of the Constables is one of the reasons I love working here. It's one of my favorite parts of the Constable family story. So we are gonna go downstairs and we're gonna show you the room that we're here to see. It's very exciting. Come on down. So we really are excited. We hope you're gonna join us next, uh, next season. Usually we'll be here from the end of May. Next year we're hoping through Christmas, that's something that's new information. So that's what we're hoping for because of our connection to Twas the Night Before Christmas. Just a little bit about that if you don't know it. Clement Seymour, who wrote the poem Twas the Night Before Christmas, was a constable cousin and he had visited the hall several times before he wrote the poem. So family tradition says that Constable Hall was part of the inspiration for him to write the classic poem, which by the way, is the most widely read piece of literature in the world. And Constable Hall, it's right here in our backyard. So this room is dedicated to Twas the Night Before Christmas. So next season, we would love you to come and visit and take a look. And we wanna thank our friends at the Lodging Kit Company for sponsoring this portion of our new exhibit. And it's gonna be a, a permanent exhibit here at the hall to, uh, to raise awareness of this really cool thing that happened right here in central New York. So the reason we're down here, come on. So the family was so invested in their relationship with native people that they actually have a room dedicated to their relationship with natives. Come on in. This room, we like to call it the Oneida room. Back then they called it the Indian room. So this room was specifically for native people. On any constable land, didn't matter where it was, Native people were allowed to camp, they could travel, they could hunt on any land that belonged to the constables. And if they were coming through this land, at that point it was 300 acres, if they were coming through this land, they could stay in this room or they could just pick up supplies. In this room, the constables, they had uh, bed, uh, uh, bed rolls, supplies, and uh, other things for Native people to feel comfortable. And one of the most important things about this room, I think, that really talks about the relationship between the constables and Native people was there were always two guns, loaded guns on the wall for the Native people to use in case they wanted to go hunting. And 
Nothing says trust more than lending someone a loaded gun. So back then, and even today, I think that really speaks volumes about the trust between, uh, between the family and Native people. And by the way, a little bit of trivia for you. Did you know that the Oneida Nation was the only tribe that actually fought with us during the American Revolution? So I thought that, thought that was an interesting piece of trivia. Now, to show the Constable family um, their appreciation, the Native people made, and this is one of our most treasured artifacts, and honestly, it's my, most, my favorite artifact in the entire museum, is this handmade buckskin jacket. This was presented to William the Purchaser, and it is handmade, it, it, there must have been hours and hours and hours of work that went into this. Jessica Farmer, who is the curator of the Oneida Nation Museum, was our guest in, in uh, last August. We have Native Appreciation Month in August at the hall. We're going to be doing that every year now. She came and looked at this and remarked on really, truly how remarkable this is. Do you see this up here, this embroidery work? Those are compasses, and that, of course, speaks of the family's um, import-export business. And these compasses, this embroidery, is made from porcupine quills. And this work is quite intense. Porcupine quills are only about that long, and to individually dye each porcupine quill and then uh, embroider with it, Jessica said there are countless hours in this. Also, something I didn't know is that back then, when you saw a Native American garment with fringe like this has, the more fringe signifies the more special this garment is. Fringe was usually saved for, um, for ceremonial garments and for very special garments. They would never wear fringe on something every day because it would get caught in, in the bushes or just things when they were working every day. So a fringed garment is extra special. And so this signifies hours and hours and hours of work. And it was presented to uh, William Sr. Also, this uh, sash down here was also presented to him as well. And so just the hours and hours of work it took to make this jacket really, really tells so much about the relationship between the constables and native people. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your, out of your day to uh, join us here. Uh, we're here in Constableville, and we do have events outside of our regular season. As a matter of fact, coming up the Sunday right before Christmas, we have an old-fashioned Christmas here at the hall, so we'd love you to join us. That's going to be from 1 to 4. We're going to have carriage rides, maybe sleigh rides if it snows. We're going to have caroling, hot chocolate, hot cider, uh, and you can actually see the jacket. It will be here if you want to come and join us for an old-fashioned Christmas. So I hope your Thanksgiving is wonderful and happy Indigenous Peoples Month here at the Hall. We love to celebrate it and we'd love you to celebrate it with us. My name is Lorraine O'Donnell. Thank you again and happy holidays.